every single item I saw in this uh, aisle contains corn syrup. In the last 30 years, America's consumption of table sugar has fallen. But our overall consumption of sweeteners has gone up more than 30%, largely because of a dramatic increase in our consumption of high fructose corn syrup. So what's your assessment of the corn crop this year? Well, it looks terrific in this area. I think you're going to have a big corn crop, yeah. What do you think we're going to yield on our corn here? Oh, I would guess it'd be someplace between 160 and 180. But that's just a guess. I ain't even walked in it, so. <laughs> Everything we've done on our acre since coming to Iowa had been designed to do one thing, grow as many bushels of corn as possible. What we hadn't realized was that what we were growing was essentially an acre of sugar. We, we know some things just, just from the factual analytical standpoint about the corn which is grown in Iowa. It has been selected for high productivity. This means uh, high volume starch production. Well, you never get something for nothing in the world of biophysics, and what you give up in the bargain is nutritional value. Most of what we've done in agricultural so-called improvements and in food processing have actually degraded our food supply from a nutritional standpoint. The corn that originally came north from Mexico was a grain with a higher protein content. But as corn was bred for higher productivity, the nature of the corn kernel was transformed. What's happened is that that increased yield has been mainly an expansion in the endosperm, or the starch fraction of the kernel of corn. And of course, now we're taking that starch and converting it to high fructose corn sweetener, which basically has no nutritional value, only adverse metabolic effects and, and empty calories. For each kernel of our corn turned into high fructose corn syrup, there's a nearly 70% chance it will end up sweetening a beverage, likely headed for a big city far from the Corn Belt. In Brooklyn, New York, about 139 million gallons of soda are consumed each year, sweetened by 20,000 acres of corn. Boruga, Boruga, ¿cómo está Boruga? ¿Está lento la cosa o qué? Así mero, así mero. Here right now, we are at uh, Fifth Avenue and Park Slope, Brooklyn, New York. And you grew up here? Grew up right in this neighborhood. Uh, I was born in Methodist Hospital. We've been growing this acre of corn in, in Iowa and trying to figure out where the corn will go when it leaves our farm. And uh, so we've been following the story of uh, corn syrup. Tell you what, just... Stopping into a bodega and buying a, a bottle of soda, it doesn't matter if it's a Pepsi or Coke or, uh, it doesn't matter. Any soda product contains corn syrup. Um, there's a, a soda, I don't know if they still have it out. It was called Colonial Grape. That had to be the sweetest grape soda I ever drank. I, I, I don't know if, if it had more sugar or more corn syrup than any other one, but I drank up to two liters a day, maybe more. One of the great changes in the American food supply during the last 20 years is that we are now drinking many more calories than we were before. And there does seem to be something about drinking calories in the form of soda, for example, that just doesn't 
generate the stop signals. I actually never thought that soda would be a, a, a large problem to drink, but um, I could show you a picture over here. The way I, I used to be, I used to weigh over 300 pounds. That's me right there. I was a size 60 in pants, and um, I stopped drinking soda, and just by not drinking soda, I, I lost about a, a third of what I weighed, you know? We have an explosion of obesity. That's probably the most conspicuous symptom of, of the nutritional crisis uh, occurring in America. But the obesity is only just part of it. A high consumption of sweeteners like high fructose corn syrup has quite adverse metabolic effects. And what we see in our long-term studies is higher risk of type 2 diabetes as well. Hello. Hi. Hi. Kurt Miller. Hi. Nice Hi. to meet you. Diabetes essentially means that your blood sugar level in the blood is higher than what your pancreas can control and keep in the normal range. One in eight New Yorkers have diabetes, which either is diagnosed or they don't know if they have diabetes and they remain undiagnosed. Like, it's not like any other disease that we have where we just give prescriptions and that's the end of it, because it's not something that goes away. Diabetes is a disease and obesity is a disease which is strongly linked to the environmental factor of food and exercise. What is the cheaper food for people? Okay, I think cost has a lot to do with what people buy. The cheaper food is really not a healthy food. And the main thing is sodas. Soda is liquid candy. And people think they're quenching their thirst drinking a glass of soda, but there you have a big uh, you know, amount of sugar that you're drinking. In a recent analysis, we found that drinking one soda per day on average almost doubled the risk of type 2 diabetes compared to only occasionally having a soda beverage or not at all. My dad, he had a pain in his toe for over six months, and he found out he was a diabetic that way. And they cut his big toe off. And before my father died, it went from his toe to his foot to below the knee to above the knee, and then he wanted to start cutting on the other leg. Um, my dad said, no, that was enough. And he just gave up. My mom died of uh, a direct result of diabetes. My grandmother died a direct result of diabetes. My sister Madeline, she's been a diabetic for years. I was recently diagnosed with diabetes. We don't think of what we're putting into our system. We don't really think about it. 